So, yay! Thank you for humoring us as we try something new. Um, you've heard me say for a long time that there are people in Together Oklahoma all over the state. Well, as you can see, people are all over the state right now. Everybody wave if you are at the budget bash. Right? Woohoo! This is a, this is amazing. Hooray for modern technology. Um, let me know if you need me to be louder or anything. Norman is just humoring, looking at my back and hearing me yell in this room. I want to make sure everybody can hear me. So, so Together Oklahoma, as you know, is about relationships between between legislative leaders and about and between constituents and we are the people who realize that things have been bad in Oklahoma but they don't have to stay that way that we can do better than what we have been doing and that is why we have been coming together um, to we like to say that two people plus a plan equals power we've already been talking a little bit in Norman today about who is in what legislative district because ideally what we would like would be for our legislators to think of themselves as being on our team. And they they work for us and we collaborate with them. Is that right? right. Yeah. 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 So right. if they have a book about entomology, they need to know they can call Kathy and she can tell them something about that. Or if they have a bill about education, they need to know they can call Debbie and she can tell them about being a retired educator. They need to know who we are. And for them to know that, we need to know each other. And so that is what Together Oklahoma has been working on. Um, we are up to almost 9,000 people getting our emails every week, right? Woohoo! It's a really great number. It's really exciting to see so many people coming on board with us. And this fall, I want to, now that we've, we've figured out the technology more, I would like to do this with even more cities on board because we have folks in Ada and Enid and Winoka and Godibo and all over Oklahoma, um, not, not just that I like to say Godibo, but there actually are together okay people there, but I do like saying Godibo. And, and so first off, I want us, I want us to so recognize, first we have um, Oklahoma City at Paseo Plunge. Give us a wave, Paseo Plunge crew. All right, all right, yes. And then we have Norman, who's right behind me. Everybody wave for Norman. And there are folks here who don't more and I think we may have some from Tuttle and Mustang as well here in Norman. If you're from Lawton or the Lawton area, give us a wave. Yes! Yes! Alright! Alright, and Tulsa, we got Tulsa and Asbury. Give us a wave, Tulsa. Alright, alright. And I know that there are folks from the surrounding areas as well. And anyone that didn't get to be here today, and there's a lot of folks who wanted to be here but couldn't, those those um, folks in Together Oklahoma will get the video of this um, later on. So they'll know about what we did today and they're gonna find out more about how to connect. So I wanna start off, does everybody have a beverage? We're gonna have a toast. Everyone have your cup in hand. I got a can. Or a can, a cup or a can or whatever you're gonna drink out of a gourd, uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever works, whatever works. <laughs> and so for our first toast, I wanna say that that we are together, Oklahoma, both near and far. And our ancestors and, our, and to our descendants, we raise a cup and give gratitude for all that sustains us and everyone and everything that, is con that has contributed to making our homes better. Many of us have ancestors who have been in Oklahoma, whether by choice or being forced to be here, and we thank them for the sacrifices they made and those who take, took the time to chip in and make things better, and to our future selves who will continue to strive, we come together to say thank you. So to Together Oklahoma, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. All right, all right. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna talk a little, next we're gonna do a little bit of the year in review. Now, we had planned for Bailey to be doing some of the year in review, and Bailey, we're gonna try this with you taking the microphone here in a moment. And, um, and, and we'll see if it works. Thank you everyone for your patience as we figure out this technology. We thought we had tested it enough times, but it looks like, um, you know, as you saw, we had some challenges, that's okay. We're figuring it out together. Um, so what have we done in the past year? Well, at this time last year, we were coming off a session where we had had a lot of losses. 
um, where we were feeling frustrated. And while we had held back some bad <clears throat> things, there were other things that went through that we felt just crummy about beside the budget. And this session, as we were just talking about in Norman, we and Together Oklahoma and other advocates all over the state were able to hold back some of the worst plans that were put forward and some of them didn't even make it out of committee. And that's a really big deal and that's down to you all. Bailey, would you like to, to step to the microphone and tell us a little bit more about what the legislative looked like from your perspective? And I'm gonna mute Norman as soon as we get you on there. All right, I am unmuted. Can everybody hear me? Are we good? Yeah. All right. Okay. We kind of We want to make sure that everybody can can hear. Um, this legislative session um, may have seemed like there were some, may have seemed a little gloomy, but there were a lot of successes this session. Um, the first being Together Oklahoma was a part of a coalition of different organizations and groups that came together to um, advocate for a better state budget. Um, because of the work that Together Oklahoma and many other groups were doing, um, there was conversation and recognition that A, we do have a structural budget problem and that it is not a spending problem, but it is a revenue problem. So that's a huge step because now we have legislators coming into agreement that the answer isn't just to keep cutting, 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 but we do need money to invest in education. We do need money to invest in healthcare and other things that we care about uh, to make Oklahoma better. So that is a huge step to having more people um, in the majority agreeing that, that it is time that we, we need to invest more in our state. Um, the second win is with that same coalition. Um, there was conversation about raising the gross production tax, making sure that everybody is paying their fair share um, to make Oklahoma better. So whether that's um, our individual citizens and also our businesses, making sure that everybody's contributing to Oklahoma's uh, growth and development. And so we have one of the lowest gross production tax rates in the country. So you'll have like Texas, who is, um, who has the tax, I think about like 8% or so when it comes to bringing money to the state for drilling. Um, I think in North Dakota, it's like 14%. In Oklahoma, we're only bringing like about three, right? So we're getting kind of cheated in that way. Um, there was a big push with this coalition and Together Oklahoma to say that we want to raise it to at least seven so we can make sure that everybody's paying their fair share and making sure that we can pay for things in our state. Um, at the beginning of legislative session, it was a non-starter. Nobody was talking about it. But because of you, it became the, the hot button issue of that last month of legislative session. And so you guys have to give yourselves a hand and, and, and really uh, pat yourselves on the back for the advocacy that you were doing to put that on the minds of legislators and making sure that that was something that needed to be considered. Um, as KJ mentioned, there were a lot of things um, that we were able to, to, to stop that would have been bad for the state. Um, if it were not for your advocacy. And so um, we have to stay encouraged um, and continue pushing, because there were also some revenue raising measures that were passed this session. And I think that's because citizens were talking to legislators, telling them that it's not okay to underfund education. It's not okay to underfund healthcare. It's not okay to underfund our roads and bridges. Like you guys saw the needs and you were pushing legislators. We have more people than ever at the state capitol um, talking to legislators and engaging with them. Um, we even got a tweet from um, the GOP's account talking about the number of advocates at the Capitol and how they were engaging respectfully with legislators and it really made an impact. So thank you guys for the work that you're doing um, because it really made a difference this legislative session and legislators were hearing what you had. Are, are we unmuted? We are, we are. Can everyone hear me? All right. Thank you so much, Bailey. That was wonderful. And that, that progress is something to build on. So in past years, when I've gone to the Capitol and I've invited you all to come, how many people would you guess met me up at the Capitol? Zero. 
Zero people came in 2013 and 2014 and 2015 when I said, I'm going to be right here. Y'all just come on up and I'll show you around. But this time, <laughs> this time, everybody was feeling a little bit more nervous, I think. Everybody was seeing, hey, our budget, our giant budget hole is an enormous crisis and we have to do something about it. It doesn't matter if you don't want to be involved in politics, we have to be involved in politics. You all step to that. And that was really huge, whether you called or wrote a letter or an email. Let me see your hands if you in any way contacted your legislators this session. Look at that. These are people who care right along with you. And like I said, these are, there are folks all over the state who are doing this with us. Um, and it's making a difference. And um, many of you may have noticed they were having those midnight budget sessions. It got a little bit wackier this year, and I like to say, and I honestly believe this is true, that they were hiding from us because they felt bad because we were so polite. And we just came down there, and we looked them in the eye, and we said, this is bad for Oklahoma, and we're going to keep doing, doing that. I even wonder if some of the ones that have resigned just felt like, oh, I can't do this anymore. There are advocates up here. I don't know. We want people who want to talk to their constituents. And so... Um, we had our prosperity agenda at the beginning of session. We had events before and throughout session. As I mentioned, we had people up at the Capitol all throughout. And while this was happening, we also had a lot of people helping us. There were legislators who were trying really hard to make things better. There were legislators who every time one of those unconstitutional bills came up, they said, why aren't we talking about the budget? We said it every time. And we, we've got to recognize that those folks were there. Someone in Norman just mentioned that her, her um, house representative says, please come and visit me. I feel really lonely <laughs> because she wasn't hearing from her constituents enough. And, and this year we're starting, we're starting to change that. They're starting to feel like they are on our team, but we need to do more of recognizing the leaders who, who did take the time to examine the issues. They, researched the options and they crafted solutions and they shared that information. And other leaders we had out there were heads of state agencies and our policy analysts. And so right now I wanna see Jean Perry and Ryan Gensler and Bailey Perkins on the video. If, if you guys can come toward the camera where I can see you. So, okay, there's Jean Perry. He's our policy director at Oklahoma Policy Institute. Um, it's Ryan and Tulsa. Shay, have, I see Ryan back there. Have Ryan come up closer. There is Ryan Gensler. He is our criminal justice policy analyst. And you all just saw Bailey Perkins, who this is the first time Oklahoma Policy Institute has had a full-time lobbyist at the Capitol all session. And she was there every single day. And I want to give all of them a round of applause. <laughs> and to all of these leaders, whether they're policy analysts or whether they're elected leaders or whether they're heads of agencies, or whether there's someone who called a bunch of their friends and said, hey, come get in the car, we're going to the Capitol. I want to raise another toast of thanks to everyone and for the leaders of the Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you all for humoring me in that. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Debbie. So now we're, we've decided to do something a little bit different this year. Um, Because, as I mentioned, we have so many people that are taking leadership roles. You know, our, the role of the legislator is pretty well defined, but the role and the responsibility of the constituent isn't always so clear. And there are people who are with us today who have actually taken the time to figure out what a citizen advocate is supposed to do and to step out there to, like, do as, as I like to say, feel the fear and do it anyway. They've just stepped up, they've put their neck out there, they've tried something new. Um, and some of them couldn't be here with us and we're going to give them their awards later. This first one that I'm going to give um, is for Marilyn Bell and she could not be here today physically, but many of you who have been with Together Oklahoma for a while saw Marilyn as she was with us from the beginning last year as our communications chair. And Marilyn wholeheartedly adopted and committed to the vision of being the volunteer communications chair. We have since realized that that was maybe a huge ask. We had an event, a communications and a research chair that were all volunteer positions, and we decided to 
step that back. But while we were doing that, Marilyn was fully there contacting helpers, crafting plans, designing projects. She hosted the Better Budget Boot Camp. And so this is for Marilyn. Let's all give Marilyn a hand. <laughs> Next up, we want to recognize Emma Sadani. Can, can we see Emma in the screen? Jean, can you get Emma? Oh, there she is. Emma is actually from Tulsa. Emma, come, come a little closer to the camera so we can see you a little bit better. There is Emma, yay! <laughs> so Emma, well, living, from, or, well, living in Tulsa, her parents are in Oklahoma City, so she's at the Oklahoma City party, which I love seeing the other Oklahoma members going to places and seeing each other. So that is fantastic that Emma gets to be there. Um, and Emma helped craft plans for events, she brought members together. She was one of two representatives to Together Oklahoma um, with a group called Action, which is the sister organization to Voice that's in Oklahoma City. Um, Emma also, it was her idea, her baby, to bring translation services um, to one of our joint events. And she made sure that, that the event was, in, was provided translation in Spanish. Um, and, and we had a multilingual Oklahoma advocacy effort. And, that gives us inspiration to do more of that, to make sure that we have more opportunities for, for all of our materials to be in sign language, to be in Spanish, to be translated to all Oklahomans in whatever way, way they need to be. And so, Jean, do you have the award there for Emma? All right, and there is, that is for Emma. Emma, thank you so much. Um, another Together Oklahoma member who was uh, who helped out. Nick Majon, he was not able to be here with us either. His event is in Tulsa, or his, uh, I don't think Nick, Nick is not in Tulsa, is he? Okay, Nick, Nick is not, was not able to be here with us, but his technical skills and knowledge in Together Oklahoma came in and helped in a big way because we have this project that I'm going to be sharing with all of you soon. It's a wiki that lets us have a page for each district and a page for each legislator, and they're cross-linked. And if you've ever used Wikipedia, I think you can immediately see the power of this. Well, we can have our own notes about who these legislators are, who, right, who these districts are. We can get all of that information, who is funding them, who else is in that district, all sorts of, what venues we have, and whether or not they've got a good internet connection. All of that can be in, in the wiki, but we found that some of us being new to editing a wiki, um, we had built it such that when you put in new information, it deleted the old information and just wrote over it on all the pages. And so Nick came in and rescued us and fixed that and helped redesign the wiki. And so we have it. We have a an award for Nick there in Tulsa, and we will be getting that to him soon. Let's give Nick a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, I would like Debbie to come up here. Ola and Debbie. Debbie, I knew you could recognize. Yes. <laughs> and so Deb, Deborah Hill is coming up right now. We talked about how we were at the Capitol in a whole new way this year. Debbie was up there telling, oh, and the camera's right there, so I'm going to let you face over this way. Come, come over here with me. Yeah. Um, she was up there making a nuisance of herself, getting to know the legislators, but, but um, I only joke that she was making a nuisance because she was so polite and kind that they even invited her to speak at some committee meetings, which we had never had happen before. And then when we started bringing more advocates up there, Debbie became our best tour guide, showing people around, and we had young men going with her to show where all the bathrooms are. Uh, these young men were coming, going out with her and talking to legislators and coming back to me and saying, KJ, they talked to me, I shook their hand. Unlike what a lot of us have been dealing with at the national level where we can't get our legislators to communicate with us, at the state capitol, you can find them and you can talk directly to them as Debbie can attest, as anyone who's gone up there can attest. There are only a couple of them that hide from us in their office and you know, maybe Maybe they shouldn't be in that job anymore if they really need to physically hide from us. But by and large, they and their staff know who we are, and that is a lot down to Debbie. So, Deborah Hill, thank you so very much.
last one, but there's actually one more. There, there's one more in Tulsa. I believe you got this award in your bag. Did you find it? I need Shay and Ryan to come up towards the camera if you can. Oh, and there's Leslie or Leslie. So Shay White, Shay White joined the Together Oklahoma team years ago. As you all saw her battling the computer, making this magic happen. She saw the vision years ago and she took it upon herself to read everything that OK Policy and Together Oklahoma were putting out. I think she can give my presentations better than I can at this point. And she just started coming to the office after a week of working a difficult job as a counselor for children in a, a, is it elementary or middle school. One of those, she came to the office and volunteered for events after events. She's been there with us. And so this year, we are giving Shay the All-Star Advocate of the Year Award. Thank you so much, Shay. Come on. All right. Um, everybody got their drink. We're gonna we're gonna raise a toast to these folks as well. To all of the leaders who have helped us out, all the all of the constituent advocates who are showing that the role of constituents is just as important as the role of legislator or governor or president or anything else. It's we the people. And so thank you all so much for your leadership. Here, here. Cheers. Here. Thank you. Here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what next? What next? This is the, the last part of our webinar before we come back together in our own, um, in our own groups. Um, and we want, we want after, after we end the webinar, your MCs in your locations are going to assist you in discussing what you would like to do in your area, you as an individual and your group, to specifically build your relationship with those legislators and with the other people in your community. Last weekend, I was at the um, ice cream festival in Tuttle, Oklahoma. I set up the booth with Debbie and several others. We set up the booth um, and we had several volunteers who went out there because they said, I feel really comfortable about my legislator. I know what my legislator is going to do. I want to reach out to other folks in Oklahoma who aren't connected to this information because as you all know, we have friends and neighbors all around us who don't know who their legislators are, or if they do know who they are, they don't know what they're doing. And when I, when I ask people if they know who their legislators are and they don't know who their legislators are, they start to feel bad and I say, don't feel bad, don't feel bad, because that's all of us. And if we don't know who they are, then maybe there's something that they are doing wrong. And maybe they should make it easy for us to be able to see them and know who they are. But that's not what's going on right now, and we can't wait for them to get to fix it and get it right. So we're gonna go and find them. And so I went to Tuttle to the Ice Cream Festival, both to let people in Tuttle and Mustang and Yukon and, and Norman and, and Blanchard and everyone that came from around there at, to the Ice Cream Festival to sign up for our information and get um, our information about what budget cuts are doing to small towns in Oklahoma, because they're feeling it the worst in rural Oklahoma. All of these scary budget cuts are the worst in places where the hospitals and the schools are, and the health departments and the nursing homes are actually closing their doors. And so we went out there and we talked to them. And as soon as I, we set up the table and I walked out there, I ran right into Representative Leslie Osborne. I ran right into her and I just started, I mean, not physically, I didn't stumble over her, but I went right up to her and I shook her hand and I talked to her about how she's been still having nightmares about the budget since session and <laughs> and how overwhelming that was for her and how difficult it was for her to go against some of her colleagues and say, no, this is a revenue issue because she needs our support. And, and I ran into Scott Biggs. Many of you know him from his um, criminal justice reforms. And, um, and, and we also ran into Senator um, Lonnie Paxton right there at the ice cream festival. Next, uh, weekend after next, we're going to the Porter Peace Festival. That's Kim, that's Kim Davis' district. We're going to meet them. And I want you all to come on the road with us. So we're gonna talk some more about those relationships that we can build with each other in our own district, so we feel like a team, with our legislators, and then with the rest of the state, so that we're not going out there to convince people to preach to them, to tell them what's what, but to make friends and get into relationships and understand what is going on in the rest of the state. Most of us are in more urban areas in Oklahoma. Rural Oklahoma, 
has wisdom and knowledge that we have no idea about and we need to go out there and we need to listen to them. So I'm inviting you right now to come on the road with me. Um, so we're gonna answer these two questions. Do we know each other and our legislators and how do we as individuals plan to take the next steps to nurture those relationships in the month of July? Because as many of you know, the budget that was passed may be found unconstitutional. The cigarette fee may be found to be a tax that wasn't introduced at the right time. And if it is, they, can, they have just a few options. They could decide to just cut all the state agencies across the board, or they could go into special session. Um, I think there are a few other options, but I think we, there are good arguments to be made on both sides, and we really don't know how the court is going to decide. If they're going to decide that, I think it was August, mid, mid to late August. And so we need to be ready. And while usually in the summer we take a break and, and relax a little bit, this year we don't get to do that. And I wish things were different, but I need you all to stay connected with us. And so we're gonna talk about that some more in our groups. So finally, I'm gonna do one more toast. Thank you all for humoring me with the toast. <laughs> okay, so for the final toast, I wanna bring us back to earth a little bit more and talk some more about how we see how overcrowded our prisons are and that that is ruining the lives of both those who are supposed to be rehabilitated and those who are doing the rehabilitating. We see that our teachers are giving up and leaving. So many of us know people who have left and parents with small children who have left. We see that our elders, our children, and those with, with disabilities are being abandoned. Are we okay with that? No. No. no, 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 we are not okay with that. We see that some big companies overpromise and underdeliver. They say we should give them all the breaks and tighten our own belt. I don't know about y'all, but my belt is pretty tight already. We see that those who, man those who manipulate the systems for their own wealth and profits, while our hospitals and our health departments, our state agencies and schools lay off vital employees and close their doors. Are we okay with that? No. no. We see that while some legislators, they do try very hard to do their best, and more of them are trying to do their best every day because we're right there talking to them. There are others who hide behind excuses. Some literally hide from their own constituents. They hide the truth that we have real options. There are real options to fill this budget hole. And we can take those options and we can save our state. They are hiding the light. Are we okay with that? No. No, no we are not. We are not okay with that. We are here today on this Sunday afternoon. We decided to take the time to come together uh, when we could be relaxing at home because we're not okay with that. Oklahoma is not okay. It's not okay. We are here because we want everybody to take responsibility for the roles they have to take on. We have our roles as constituents because we have chosen to live in this society. By choosing to live here, we have our roles and responsibilities as a citizen. Some of us have roles as people working for, for policy organizations, state agencies, nonprofits, schools, healthcare workers, and more, and we have those responsibilities to fulfill as well, as well as parents who have their responsibility for their children. Some of those among us are even running for office right now, and we are a nonpartisan organization, so I'm not gonna recognize everybody who, but, who is running for office, but thank you to anyone who is running, or who will run, or who has run in the past. Thank you so much for your efforts. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Many more will take on roles helping with campaigns, both the campaigns for elected leaders, but also campaigns like the Save Our State campaign. There are issue campaigns. We can go knocking door to door and say, hello, I, my name is KJ. Would you like to talk about fiscal responsibility? And maybe we're gonna drive the people nuts, but maybe we're gonna get into some good conversations with our neighbors. We expect our legislators to honor the responsibilities of the offices they have taken on. We need them to work on making themselves transparent and accessible. If they're going to work for us, we need to know who they are and what they are doing. They have a responsibility to view our state budget as a moral document and to participate in all the ways 
they can make make the best budget they can craft. Am I right? Yes. 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 And so here is to all of us coming together. May we get curious. May we get together. May we get creative. May we take notes and share our information with each other and know that we are in this together. I am proud to be here with all of you. To Together Oklahoma. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much for being on the webinar. MCs, at this point, we're gonna log out and have a conversation. Everybody enjoy the snacks and, um, and we'll, we'll be back here again together soon. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.